Hi, my name is Thomas Radicke. My talk will be less technical, more stuff to look at. And uh, <laughs> thanks. That regular one, yeah. And F, please, just F. All right, I'll just switch on. So yeah, um, I'm a teacher for 3D graphics and animation, and I also use Blender for fun and recreation. So um, yeah, this is one of my recent projects that just, that just popped up on accident, and it all started with a rock. And that rock is uh, a 3D scanned model that I uh, did myself. Um, in the excellent Meshroom. Uh, if you haven't used it before, uh, go and try it. It's open source. It runs on uh, Windows, Linux, and macOS, and it's awesome. Um, anyway, this, uh, this rock here turned out to be a three and a half million polygon thing. Um, and I thought, OK, I, I want to render this in a beautiful way and uh, just make it look uh, interesting. And I rendered this, and I noticed I wasn't really happy about the bouquet. So you can see the shapes of that bouquet. I already tricked around a little bit with that. It has a, a, a custom aperture in it so that the bouquet circles aren't really round anymore. But still, I was unhappy, and I wanted to improve that. So um, first, I had to understand how bouquet is made, and I just want a better bouquet. And bouquet is um, actually, uh, on the left side, you can see perfectly mathematical, perfectly round bouquet, uh, the stuff that is typically generated by 3D graphics software. And on the right side, you can see an actual photo that I took myself, and you can see that the shape of the bouquet is actually dependent on the position on screen, and also has some irregularities like the, the cut off cut off pieces there on the lower right. And if you look very closely, you can actually see a little structure inside the bouquet circles on the lower right as well. So there's like, like a small type of fingerprint in it. And all of these things are missing on the left side. So I went on to create something like that. So what you see here is a simple lens made of two spheres and a, a simple refraction shader and I set up a camera to look at a particle system that was made of, of, of uh, little fireflies basically and I got that thing that you see on the right and this told me it's possible to make better bouquet in cycles and I went on to to experiment a bit more and this is one of the first results I did um, looks pretty neat um, I actually already had the, the type of effect that I wanted custom bouquet but uh, the problem was with this scene this was like a 250 millimeter Taylor shot and so it was completely unusable with regular scenes uh, and I experimented a bit more and got this and that's not really what I wanted it's kind of blurry so I had to do some more research into how lenses can actually affect the image itself and I basically went into um, <laughs> photo history and uh, found this wonderful piece of software called Optical Ray Tracer that uh, helped me design lens systems made of, uh, of classical photographic systems. And it's uh, pretty neat. You can just uh, push around the lenses and uh, adjust the, the parameters of the lenses to see what kind of result you will get on the right side. And uh, I used this to uh, create a more custom lens systems. This, this was one of the results. Um, so yeah, it's uh, even a bit better, but I'm still not happy yet. Um, using this kind of system introduced a couple of problems, like focusing. Uh, you couldn't just put, put the focus point directly on the object anymore, because you're basically behind a lens system, and I, I needed to adjust the, the focus point just in tiny, tiny steps, and it needed to, to, to have a live render to actually see what I was doing. <laughs> And this, yeah, while it is very tedious, it actually produces pretty neat results. So when I zoom out and disable this, yeah, it's focused all right. OK. Um, this is an animation of what refocusing actually looks like in the bouquet. And you can see the shapes of the bouquet actually changing depending on the focus. By the way, what you can see here on the upper left and everywhere, basically, are a couple of optical aberrations, like chromatic aberration. That's when the, the pieces actually string up like this. And I needed to correct that a bit. Um, but here's another thing. Uh, I actually built a little s a synthetic aperture that I could control with the shape key. So opening, opening it up and closing it would produce different uh, aperture sizes and shapes. And eventually, I came up with this here. Um, as you can see, the camera's upside down, by the way, because that's the way photographic systems work. And it took me from this to that. <laughs> Okay, so I need to finish up. Have a look at the, a closer look at the left uh, left top side. Uh, as you can see, there's actually a little structure in the in the bouquet itself. That's because I actually put a displacement map on the front left uh, front lens. Um, 
it's pretty cool. Uh, I did a, a few more experiments. I tried to simulate lens flares, but I had to give up after uh, 65,000 transmission samples and almost <laughs> eight minutes render time. Um, it did kind of work, but I think Cycles has some problems with that. Okay, anyway, um, here, here's some more renders. Um, um, as you can see, quite a lot of distortion, but maybe I can fix it in post. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know enough about uh, optical design yet to actually make uh, a correct uh, camera system that corrects this, but um, I think this is uh, this is pretty neat. That's a, a scene that I had rendered previously, and it, it's more like a dreamlike thing, which was also the inspiration for the scene anyway. But um, yeah, that's not not that's cool. So um, there's there's also one attempt to actually fix. Um, uh, that that uh, distortion, and it kind of worked, but um, yeah, I have to do a bit more experimentation. And uh, downsides, it's pretty complicated to build and use. And the, the render times became a bit longer, not that much longer though, so maybe one and a half, two times longer. I think that's a kind of a okay trade-off for that kind of effect. Um, there are some things that cannot be simulated in cycles like chromatic aberration, and of course optical design needs to be your thing. But the plus points, the results are awesome, and I finally got that look that I wanted, so thank you. <laughs> and more in case you want to see more stuff of mine, I've got an Instagram channel as well. <clears throat> Thanks. Thank you. I will ask a few people. Uh